Hello everyone! For today's video, we're going to take a look at a show that ran from 1967 to 1968 called The Invaders. The series focuses on David Vincent, an architect who's driving home from a business trip late one night when, overcome with tiredness, he pulls over to take a nap. But he suddenly wakes to the astonishing sight of a flying saucer landing in front of his car. Completely bewildered and looking for an explanation, Vincent returns to the near-deserted town the next day to investigate. By the end of the pilot episode, he's uncovered an invasion plot. Aliens from a dying planet are infiltrating our world, executing an elaborate and cunning takeover. David Vincent becomes a one-man crusader, searching for evidence that will prove the legitimacy of his claims to an unbelieving world, while doing everything he can to wreck the aliens' plans. But the invaders are constantly one step ahead. Their control is widespread, and he's just one man. The show is often referred to as a study in paranoia, where the aliens look just like us, except that some of them have, as David puts it, an awkwardness about the hand, a deformity of the fourth finger. As he travels around the country investigating UFO sightings and other strange incidents, he doesn't always know who he can trust. The only person he can be sure of is himself, and by extension, he is the only one that we, the audience, can trust. David Vincent must walk a lonely, dangerous road, never able to get too close to anyone for fear the aliens will use them against him, and endangering his life in order to stop the invasion and save a world that condemns him as a crackpot. One of the series' greatest strengths is its earnest, compelling protagonist, played by Roy Thinnes, who, as the only character who appears in all 43 episodes, carries the weight of the show. Unlike a lot of other alien shows of the time, the tone of the invaders is very serious, and it's largely up to Thinnes to sell us on the gravity of the situation, which he does with great success. David Vincent is relatable, likable, easy to root for, a regular guy who didn't go looking for any of this, but now that he knows, he can't go back to his old life. At times he gets discouraged and frustrated, but he never loses his humanity. There are others who learn the truth about the invaders, who could be valuable witnesses and tell the world that he's not crazy or a liar, but they're so traumatized by their harrowing encounters that rather than prolong their ordeal by forcing them to publicly take his side, Vincent leaves them to recover and continues his fight alone. Speaking of fighting, I personally appreciate that he's not an especially great fighter. He's not bad, but he is frequently overpowered. Remember, he's an architect, not exactly a profession that calls for a lot of fistfights. He gets into a scuffle with aliens in nearly every episode, and he gets knocked unconscious several times, which I find refreshing. Uh, not that he gets knocked out, that's terrible, but that he remains vulnerable. He doesn't suddenly become all beefed up and macho, kicking butt all over the place. His hand-to-hand -hand combat skills and marksmanship do improve as time goes by, but he's still more brains than brawn. Also, my mom and I appreciated that no matter how urgent the situation, he always takes the time to open doors for the ladies. What a gentleman. Yes, I did watch the show with my mom, who remembers watching it when it originally aired when she was a kid. At that time, her parents only had a black and white television, so she missed out on the colorful opening credits and special effects, but I guess if you didn't know what you were missing, you didn't have anything to be disappointed about. She did not remember much about the show plot-wise, which is good because then everything was a surprise, but she did inform me very early on, like five minutes into the first episode, that she remembered having a crush on David Vincent. And it didn't take me very long to agree that that is a perfectly acceptable response to his character. Not only is he good-looking, with his wavy blonde hair and blue eyes and rare smile, but he's just a likable, appealing, sympathetic character. As these things usually go, though, of course, any time he did anything charming or inadvertently humorous, we had to look at each other and giggle for a second, because that's just the way we are. 
He also happens to be a very good listener. In his travels, he comes across people with various problems, and several of them end up confiding in him. It can be a relief to talk through your personal troubles with a stranger who you're probably never going to see again, especially when that stranger is patient and kind, asks intuitive but not intrusive questions, and doesn't judge you for your honest answers. I know that these thoughtful, quieter moments are not the big highlight of the show, but I really appreciated them. Another great strength of The Invaders is the pool of talented guest stars, a who's who of actors who were all over TV at the time. My mom recognized more people than I did, since she grew up with this stuff and I'm not as well acquainted with old television, but I still recognized a lot of faces, and I especially enjoyed seeing people who I knew from their work in motion pictures. Surprisingly, several of these guest stars appear in both Season 1 and Season 2, but as different characters, which was a little funny sometimes. For example, when Suzanne Plachette, who plays a memorable character in Season 1, reappears toward the end of Season 2 as a character with some similar qualities, my mom joked, doesn't he recognize her? There's also a small handful of recurring characters who start showing up in the latter half of Season 2, most notably Kent Smith as Edgar Scoville, a highly respected millionaire businessman whose influence and resources prove invaluable to the cause. The show was a Quinn Martin production, which perhaps explains why the subject matter was handled so seriously. Martin produced a number of other shows, most famously The Fugitive, which features a similarly isolated main character. The Invaders was supposedly inspired by 1956's Invasion of the Body Snatchers, a must-see classic, and 1953's Invaders from Mars, a movie I saw for the first time just last year in which a little boy finds himself in much the same predicament as David Vincent. I really enjoyed that one, although the pajama-clad aliens at the end made it pretty goofy. There's nothing really goofy about the invaders, though. No silly outfits, it's not especially corny, there's no out-of-place comic relief, and the special effects haven't become super cheesy over time either. They're not terribly fancy, but they're neat and impressive for a 1967 show with a limited budget. And since the effects are not the big draw here, they're more than sufficient, consisting mostly of flying saucer activity, and when an alien gets mortally wounded, its body burns up and disappears, leaving nothing but grey ash behind. It's a cool effect, and wisely not overused. Season 1 especially features some great music written by Dominic Frontier, who wrote music for a lot of other shows of the time, including The Outer Limits. There's something really unnerving about the lurching atonality of the end credits music. In a way, it's a very 60s show in terms of women's fashions, hairstyles, the occasional dancing, and the cars, oh my goodness, the cars, boat-like convertibles, and four-door sedans as long as this house. It's hilarious to watch them bouncing like a seesaw through rocky deserts and hilly landscapes. In other respects, however, the show feels timeless in its themes, its atmosphere, its emotions, and fortunately for him, David Vincent favors classic suits over loud prints, bold colors, and trendy cuts, which would definitely have dated the show. I'm especially grateful that the series never tried to outdo itself. A lot of sci-fi, alien shows I've seen, actually a lot of TV shows in general, hit a point where they keep upping the ante so much that things just get way too complicated. There are suddenly too many details for the writers to keep track of, and the story starts getting sloppy or contradicting itself, or it starts overreaching to make some sort of metaphysical statement, forgetting what made it so good in the first place. That never really happened to The Invaders. The series kept its original focus and stayed grounded and intelligent and content with its very gradual development of the overall plot. Maybe things would have changed if it had continued on for more than two seasons. Things were already different in the second half of season two, but we'll never know. My biggest disappointment with the show, besides the fact that I wish they'd saved the outtakes, 
is that it didn't keep on going. I knew beforehand that there were only the two seasons, and I hoped that it wasn't going to end abruptly. And it doesn't end on a cliffhanger, which is good, but it doesn't come to the most satisfying conclusion either. I can think of plenty more they could have done with the story, the aliens, David Vincent, and I would have loved to have seen at least one more season, and I'm sure other fans would agree. Now, if you're watching the show on DVD, you have the option to watch each episode with a brief introduction from Roy Finnis himself, who tells you a little bit about the plot of the episode, hopefully not too much, although there were a couple times that I was like, whoa, hold on, <laughs> don't give it all away. He tells you one or two things about the guest star and when the episode aired. We watched one at my mom's request just to check it out, and then we ended up watching all of them. <laughs> There is also an interview with Roy Finnis, recorded about 10 years ago, in which he shares his memories of working on the show, getting the part, the effect it's had on his life. It actually seems to be one interview split into two parts, with the first half on the season 1 set and the second half on the season 2 set. After spending hours with him as David Vincent, it was a lot of fun to see him as himself, and he has some really good stories to tell, so I would recommend watching those interviews as well as watching the show itself, which I do recommend very highly. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I would love to hear from you if you are a fellow Invaders fan, whether you watched it when it originally aired, or caught it later in reruns, or thanks to recent DVD releases, have become a new fan like myself. And for those of you who are watching this who have never seen the show and think it sounds interesting, I hope that you'll check it out. Thanks for watching!